Hello, my name is Dr. David Oster, and I'm an orthopedic surgeon at Denver Vale Orthopedics who specializes in knee and shoulder disorders as well as sports medicine, board certified in orthopedic surgery as well as sports medicine. And this is a program that I put together that discusses meniscus function, injury, and its treatment. <clears throat> Meniscal tears are very common in the athletic population as well as in people as they get older and it is one of the most common injuries that I see in my practice. And I'd like to discuss its function, injury, and treatment in this program. What are the menisci? Well, they're two cartilage discs that sit between the femur, the upper bone, and the lower bone, which is called the tibia. This picture on the right is a tibia, which is the lower bone, and the upper bone has been taken on off. In the middle are the cruciate ligaments, on the left side of this picture is the medial meniscus outlined in white and on the right side is the lateral meniscus which is outlined in red. The medial meniscus is more C-shaped whereas the lateral meniscus is more oval shaped. The medial meniscus has a very firm attachment to the lower bone of the tibia and that meniscus has an increased risk of tearing in people as they get older. The outer meniscus, the red, on the right hand side is more commonly injured in a ligament injury such as tearing the anterior cruciate ligament. What's the function? Well it increases the surface area of contact between the two bones and therefore it decreases pressure. On the upper portion of the picture on the right hand side the F stands for the femur which is the upper bone and the lower bone the T is the tibia and this is a cross-sectional view and you can see how the upper bone is curved and the lower bone is straight. So the meniscus helps take the upper bone and take the pressure of that and spread it over a wider surface area on the lower bone. There are also other functions of the meniscus. It also provides stability to the knee in patients with a ligament injury. It acts much like a chalk underneath a tire on a plane and it prevents the upper bone from coming back on the lower bone as seen in the diagram on the right hand side. What are the symptoms in somebody that has a meniscal tear? Well, one of the more common symptoms associated with the meniscal tear is pain over the side of the knee, which can be described as an ache or a sharp pain. Another symptom is pain, which worsens with crossing legs, twisting, weight-bearing activities, and squatting. When you squat, you load the back part of the meniscus which is the area which is most commonly torn in patients that have a meniscal tear. It also can be associated with swelling. And lastly, people can have catching and occasional locking symptoms. Catching means that there's a flap that gets displaced and it will feel like something gets caught in the knee. And locking, which is much less common, is when the meniscus will get caught in between the bones and prevent the person from straightening or bending the knee fully. Well, how do you treat meniscal tears? Well, the treatment depends on the location of the tears. Tears at the periphery have a blood supply, and these can be repaired. Much like if you cut your skin, it bleeds and it sticks back together, the meniscus heals in the same fashion. This picture on the right-hand side, those black lines, are all blood vessels that have been injected with India ink. And you can see how there's a very vascular area in the outer third of the meniscus um, in people. However, tears that occur on the inner two-thirds do not have a blood supply and these tears are not amenable to repair because they don't bleed, they'll not stick back together and therefore heal. So these tears are best treated with an arthroscopic debridement or removing the portion of the meniscus that's torn so it doesn't continue to cause symptoms as mentioned before such as pain, swelling, and tenderness and occasional catching and locking. How is a meniscus tear treated? Well, it's treated with an arthroscopic procedure. Arthro means joint and scopy means looking into so basically it's looking into the joint and arthroscopy first came into existence in about the 1950s by a physician by the name of Watanabe. 
and it's comprised of a fiber optic light cord so there's a light source that comes into the camera and this is attached to the lens. The lens is attached to a camera and the camera is attached to a TV screen. So we're able to put this instrument into many different joints. This is a knee joint here and we're able to visualize the picture on a TV screen. So we don't actually have to cut into the knee much like we used to to be able to separate the tissues and look into the joint. And this is an arthroscope here. The lens, which is a rigid uh, lens, there's the camera, and then there's the light cord. And you can see the size of this in comparison to the hand in the upper right of this picture. So the, this is the instrument that we look, use to look in many of the joints and perform surgeries through many small incisional um, procedures. Now, what about meniscal injuries? Well, again, there's the medial and lateral meniscus. Many of the tears occur in the avascular area. This happens to be a radial tear, which is one of the more common tears that we see, and this is outlined in red. How do we treat this? Well, because it won't heal, we need to trim that area and trim it out so that there are no rough edges. So we kind of ellipse it out so that it has a smooth transition between the areas that are torn and the area that wasn't torn. And during the surgery, we try to leave as much behind as possible. Now this is a diag diagram of a medial meniscus tear and this is after it's been taken out and it can be done with uh, punches or basket uh, scissors or it can be done with a shaver or both. Here's a patient with a meniscus tear. This is the left knee, the medial meniscus and there's the tear back there and this has a flap component which can move back and forth and get caught in the knee and you'll see that in just a moment. And this is what the tear looked like after it was trimmed up with an arthroscopic procedure. So again, this is the tear when we first got it when I first got into the knee, and then this is the actual procedure here. A shaver is placed in the knee, and this shaver has a circular blade that goes around that has small teeth in it, and it's able to grab onto the meniscus and debride it or trim it up, and it's hollow so that it's able to suck those pieces out. Here's the flap component of that tear and the uh, shaver's going to chew that up and then suck it out through the suction that's attached to it. And we want to make sure that there's a smooth transition. So I'm going to the each end of the tear to make sure that there aren't any loose fragments or areas that can get pinched between the upper and the lower bone. So at this point, the shaver's done, and I'll bring in an arthroscopic basket, and this will cut the meniscus and trim it up in pieces. So we want to remove all the areas of the meniscus that are softened and frayed so that it doesn't re-tear in the future. So this is an arthroscopic basket here. We have to rotate it some to be able to get into the areas that, we, that I need to get into and there's an assistant pushing on the knee to kind of open that space up so that these fine instruments can be put into the area and accomplish the surgery without opening it up. Occasionally, if the meniscus is a little bit roughened, we'll bring in an electro, uh, electrocautery probe here, and this can ablate the tissue or basically vaporize the tissue and smooth it out. And it's not constantly on. We'll, we'll uh, turn it on very quickly, you can see here, and it will kind of shrink the meniscus and ablate that tissue right there again right there and right over there and that can smooth out the meniscus and uh, make a nice transition between the front part and the back part of the meniscus. So again this is what the meniscus tear looked like prior to the arthroscopic procedure again that flap component that silver thing is a probe and then this is after the meniscus was trimmed up on this upper portion of the screen is the upper bone femur and the lower portion is the tibia covered with articular cartilage. What's the post-operative management after an arthroscopic debridement? Well for the first 24 to 48 hours post-op elevate ice and compression. You can weight bear as comfort allows. After 48 hours 
you can gradually return to normal and low impact activities such as stationary bike, walking, and some gentle weightlifting such as leg extensions, leg presses, and hamstring curls. And then you can gradually use pain and swelling as your guide for return to activities. Now there are certain types of tears that can be repaired. Again, this is looking down on the lower bone of the tibia. Tears that are rather um, clean that occur in the outer one-third or in the area where the meniscus has a blood supply and these can be treated with arthroscopic sutures. The tear here is depicted in red and there are two black sutures that are placed in the meniscus and then these are tied over the back part of the knee and this will hold the meniscus tear together and allow it to heal. And this is what it looks like arthroscopically upper bones the femur lower bones the tibia and then the meniscus is outlined there with the lettering and those blue strands are the sutures that have been placed to hold the meniscus tear together. If possible we prefer to repair the meniscus and the reason for this is as mentioned before it does provide some function to the knee and it helps lessen the risk for arthritis and does provide some stability to the knee. However, only a small portion of meniscal tears are indicated for repair. Most are treated with arthroscopic debridement. Postoperative management includes, again, elevate ice and compression for 48 hours. Usually I keep these patients non-weight bearing for four to six weeks. However, if a patient can't comply with that protocol, then I will allow them to weight bear in a straight leg brace. The healing rate is about 5 to 10 percent better for non-weight bearing as compared to those patients that are allowed to weight bear. Initial therapy includes working on range of motion and gentle strengthening and then gradually returning back to full activities between four and six months. It takes quite a long time for the meniscus to heal adequately to allow a patient to return back to sporting activities. Well, I hope you found this program enjoyable and learned something about meniscus function and injury. If you have other questions, please visit us at our website at denvervaleorthopedics.com or our office number to make an appointment is 303-214-4500. And this is Dr. David Oster from Denver Vale Orthopedics. Thank you.